Good evening, and welcome to another episode of Q Stare Q. What you gonna do? I don't know, but something's gonna grow. It's the Q Stare Q Stare Q Stare Q Stare Show. Well, as you can see, darkness is falling upon us, so let's close up the house. And this is my third time filming, you guys. I was trying to use the tripod and it just did not work out for me. So I said, well, let me do it over. It kept cutting off. And then the one where I did get a full episode, it it was too close. (laughs) So everything was kind of zoomed in. Okay, well, we'll start in the kitchen. Well, I got my dehydration started today. I got my peppers cut up earlier today, and this is batch number one of a possible three, okay? As you can see, I loaded this dehydrator. This is going to take, these have been going for a few hours now. It's going to run all night. It'll probably go 24 hours, which means I'm behind on the onion butts because I wanted to get those started today, and... uh But I'm not going to do that until the peppers are completely dry. And I have, uh, this is batch number one. And then I have another, this was from three of the peppers. And and so I still had five to go. And so I have another bag and a half that I cut up and froze on today. And so those will be next. I'll take those out after these get dry. And I store these in a mason jar. And then I'll get the other ones out. I have a feeling that combined with this uh, red uh, pepper powder, I might mess around and get, I know I'm going to get well over a pint of it. I'm, I'm certain of that. But I'm hoping to shoot for a quart. In fact, depending on how close it comes to a quart, and see this is the quart size, depending on how close I come to a quart, if it's like just a little ways to go, then I'm going to go on and mix the mixed pepper blend in with it. I'll just shake it all and just have one big, you know, sweet pepper. It'll just be mainly the Italian peppers, but it'll also have the mixed peppers with it as well. That is if I can fill up the quart jar. If not, then I'll keep it separate. I'll have my half pint as well as this that I've been going through. I've already used half of that, and this was full. That's how much I love it. Oh, I put some of that. I put some of the red peppers in the, in the cabbage as well as the mixed peppers. Took it to another level. So from here on in my cabbage, I will be adding that. I meant to tell y'all, I decided to try the uh, parsnip and I didn't put it in the cabinet. cabbage. I almost said cabinet. I didn't put it in the cabbage because I thought, uh-uh, no. If I put that parsnip... Uh, if I put that parsnip in the cabbage and don't like it, then I'm in trouble. Oh, I just found one of my little baby mason jars, y'all. I thought I was out of these, the little bobcats. Yay! Okay. All righty. So, I'll, I'm going to use that. I'm going to put that to use. The onion powder might fill that up from those three onions. That will be great. I, In fact, I know it will because I'll add this onion powder to it. And then we'll get that full baby mason jar. Yay! I didn't even know I had that. Okay, so anyway, and my other ones got away from me, of course. But anyway, uh, back to the the pepper. So we'll see how that turns out. In the meantime, I'm behind on the onion butts, but that's okay. Because I have until, I didn't want to plant them out anyway until like the 15th. And so this one, I'll just let this one continue to grow, which it'll do. It'll be the best one. And I'm going to mark that one because that is the first one. So I want to make sure that I mark that one. Okay, so, uh, yep, so that's where we're at with the dehydrating. And so, like I said, I've got another batch that I'll be squeezing on there. And I, hopefully I can get them all on there and not have to do a third batch. So if that's the case, then that second batch will go on tomorrow. And then I will um, finish this up hopefully by Wednesday. Then I can get going with the onions. And then I still need to make up my cousin's batch. But I'm waiting on hers simply because I want to at least give her, and she's not getting that bobcat, 
but I at least want to get her one of these full. And if this does not fill that up, then I will use some of mine to fill her up. Okay. Let me close the let me close the uh, blind here since it's getting darker by the second. Okay. What time is it? 7:22. Yep. It'll be dark by 7, probably about 7:30. Okay, let's go to the back. I brought my uh I'm gonna be this weekend. I'm I'm going to be getting the peppers uh cut into Y branches and cut down to the nub. Oh, I didn't even know the back door was open. Yeah, I'm gonna be getting the peppers cut down to the nub. And so uh See, there's everything, and I checked everything. I did have to water the peppers today. They're they're dying pretty quick, but I they're full of peppers. So, and they've gotten a little bigger uh, since Friday. So I'm gonna go on and let those go for the rest of the week. And what, regardless of the size, they're gonna get plucked this weekend, and I'll get those dehydrated, no matter the size, and then we'll go from there. And then I'll get those plants brought in. But in the meantime, uh, I left my old basil plant out because it, it is dying from the weather because it's cool. But I brought this one in and it's hardened off because it's been out there for a week. It's growing real good. And uh, I said, I don't want it to die on me out there. So I brought it in and my sister wants some of these. So I'll be splitting this with her. So I'll get it planted for her. And so when she gets back from my uncle's 90th uh, birthday celebration this weekend, then uh, I'll make sure that she gets her basil. All righty, you guys. Well, before I get off of here real quick, we are seven minutes. I'm going to try to keep this short and sweet. Let's discuss the hurricane, y'all. I know that you all saw the coverage and the death toll and everything. But one thing that crossed my mind about this hurricane, now granted, uh, Florida was warned. Most of the people evacuated who were ordered to because they told them that it was going to be unsurvivable storm surge. What happened was the worst case scenario, as you all uh, know now. It took a slight turn that they said it could happen, but they they didn't. They just didn't know. And so when that happened, it went into Georgia, Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, and parts of Tennessee. And that's where your death tolls were the highest, especially in the Carolinas. In fact, it's expected to rise. Uh, and so I don't think they had evacuation orders, if I'm not mistaken. I really don't know because I was basically paying attention to Florida. And then that's the part that they really showed and focused on, Florida and Georgia, uh, on the Weather Channel. And then, you know, they went into the Carolinas later, but I know they weren't expecting what happened to happen. But because that hurricane did what it wanted to do, uh, it happened, you know, which is terrible. But now you have people who are trapped in their uh, homes and whatnot because the roads are flooded out or they're impassable. And so now they're dropping food and stuff from the helicopters. And I thought to myself, I wonder how many out there were preppers because those who were able to remain in their homes and didn't have to be rescued, uh, you know, they, they need food, you know, they need to eat and whatnot. And I thought to myself, I said, wow, I said to have to depend on the government to feed you so that you don't start starving and dying of thirst out there because of a disaster that just scares me. And I thought, this is why we prep. And I remember posting that, you know, to my Facebook page. And of course, crickets as usual. And then uh, 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 JD and I, we were discussing it too on today. And I told him, we cannot get complacent at all, period. Because, and see, and Robert, he preps as well. And JD, you know, he does his garden and stuff. I don't think he did one this year. But anyway, but, you know, they're on board with all of that. But the point is, what I'm trying, the point that I'm trying to make is we have a new hurricane. In fact, they named it Tropical Depression 12, but it is now 
uh, considered a tropical storm, and it's headed this by this weekend. It's supposed to hit the east coast. It's the direct path. They said it can change, but if it does not change, it is headed directly to the east coast. That will affect us. And that's why I keep an eye on hurricanes and whatnot, because when they hit the East Coast, you know, you're talking New Jersey, New York, parts of Canada, you know, areas with the water. Well, Michigan falls into that, although we're the North, but because we're the Great Lakes state and we're so we're surrounded by Canada, Ohio, uh, Pennsylvania isn't that far from us. It's about six hours. Uh, uh, let's see. New York is about six hours. Canada 20 minutes from me, but you know, the ocean, ocean part, you know, and everything is uh, further away, Niagara Falls and, you know, wherever your big waters are. But Michigan have some big waters too. We just don't have oceans, but we have the Great Lakes and, and they're, they're, you know, one step off of being an ocean, I say, because those waters are never ending and they connect, you know. So anyway, um, the thing is, whenever a hurricane hits east, we always get get uh, bombarded, you know, with the heavy rains and the winds and everything else. And, you know, we can get deaths and stuff, too, and, and we get tornadoes and whatnot. But I'm afraid, you know, because if this thing comes in the way that they're expecting, no telling what may happen. And our roads, our infrastructure is horrible here. You would think with us being the Great Lakes state that they would have something in place in the event of floods, but we don't. And and we do, we flood, you know. Now I'm on a slope, I'm on a hill, but I remember last year, I think like four or five inches of rain fell and Robert was out there in it and, and he ended up getting flooded. You know, he was talk. He came on live and was talking about how it was so much water, and he showed it. It looked like he was in the middle of a river. And then I live right around the corner from a lake, but fortunately, my street is on a slope. So not to say that water can't come up that slope and flood us out, but technically, it's going to go downward. You know, that's what I'm thinking. But still, it just goes to show, you know, we all can be affected and thank God that I prep because let's say, you know, even if I'm not affected by flood waters, our streets can become imp impassable. And this could happen to, to us, you know, in the next uh, few days here. It can very well happen. So the point is, I'm glad that, you know, I've prepped enough to where if I had to stay sheltered in place with no means of getting to the stores or, or whatever, I have enough to sustain me for a few months, you know, if, if, if need be. And then not to mention our treacherous winters. I was telling uh, JD, I was like, uh, it's been 10 years since we've had a bad winter and bad for us is back to back snowstorms, back to back where you're getting two, one to two feet, sometimes three feet of snow at a time where we're snowed in and that can happen. You know, we've been snowed in many times where the snow has been just so bad that everything is shut down and uh, schools and, you know, uh, gas stations, stores and all that. And my mother, you know, although she wasn't what you would call a prepper, but my mother always, oh, especially at wintertime when we had the worst winters, you know, back when I was growing up, I got to get to the grocery store. He, she would always load up on everything so that. Whenever we had storms, we were never without food. She made sure. And we just lived, you know, we kept on, we carried on as if nothing was going on. Whereas people around us <laughs> were in distress because they didn't, they weren't prepared for it. And so I've learned uh, throughout the years, just living on my own, uh, whenever it's going to be a snowstorm, I go to the grocery store, whether I need groceries or not, you know, if I'm able to or whatever. And most of the times, I am able to go there and get something. But the point is, you know, when I started the prepping as much as I can, I have enough to sustain me in the event I am snowed in. My freezers are full, thank God. You know, and my cabinets are full of canned goods. I have my oats, you know, my cereals, that type of thing. The most I would need to pick up at a store in the event of a snowstorm that could trap me in would be I would need to go get some bread and milk, you know, something simple. But as far as meals and whatnot, I will be able to sustain for sure. 
you know, if I'm snowed in. So I'm preparing for that this year because we are long overdue for a bad, treacherous winter. Everybody's saying, well, with the global warming, we just don't have bad winters anymore. But it can fool us. It can fool us. And I watch these hurricanes and stuff because usually when it's a bad hurricane year, as this one is, is, is planning to be or looking as if it's going to be, we usually end up getting a bad winter. And so... Uh, you know, so I'm getting the snow blower ready because uh, the snow blower that my my friend gave me, uh, I tried to start it the other day and it wouldn't start. So I don't know anything about it. That electric snow blower, I would have loved to have been able to use that because that's one I can handle well. But since it will not start, I've I've got to pull out the big one. So I'll be doing that probably in the next couple of weeks here. And uh, I'll be, what I do is I pull it out, I put it right at the back door, and then I chain it. I have this this uh, nice thick chain. It would take a lot <laughs> to be able to get that. And then I cover it, I lock it up with my heavy-duty uh, lock, and then I cover it up for the winter. And then whenever it snows, if, if I need to use it, <laughs> which is rare, but it's there. And I always make sure I start it up, make sure it's oiled up, gassed up, and all that. So it's ready to go. And so anyway, so I'll be getting that prepped. I'm going to be digging out the front bed here because I have some Irish whey potatoes that are that I rooted. Uh, I started rooting them back in July, and they have some nice roots on them. So I want to get those planted around the 15th of October. So we're looking at 16 days. So I'm going to dig at least a half foot in that fr same front bed where I put the roost out potatoes, where I just dropped them on that hard surface <laughs> and they did nothing. And then I'm going to still cover them with hay again, but they're going to be buried underneath. So I should get some potatoes and I've got my amendments. I got that sulfur, which I found out that was the one amendment that I was missing. I have the fish emoji. And so I'm going to amend that soil real good so that soil will be able to sit real nicely for about seven days. Then I'll toss those potatoes in there, get those buried, get the hay over them, and they'll sit until next year. They'll come up, and then we'll see what happens. Okay, so I'm rambling now, so I'm going to get off of here. But that's today's episode. You know, the hurricane business has bothered me, especially with all the death and everything. And... uh and then with the prepping and then the people, when I saw how they're dependent on the government to drop food out of a plane, and you know it's not probably not the best food, but they have to depend on that. I'm glad that hopefully if something like that happens with me, you know, uh, I'll accept whatever they drop out of a plane. But I, at least I ha know I have food in here to where I can eat a halfway decent meal. Of course, I would ration but at least I would be able to eat a halfway decent meal and not depend on the government. So I think that we all need to think about that and, you know, make those plans just in case. You never know. You never know. Anything could happen. And that, and you know, that, that was a practice round for me for S-H, wait, what is it? S-H-T-F. So, uh, I mean... With the power going down the grid, you know, uh, I mean, anything. It's not just it's not just war and whatnot. It could be anything that could cause us to be in distress where we would need to depend, either depend on the government or we have our preps available to us to where we don't have to depend as much on the government and whatnot. So, yep, so that's all I wanted to say. So I'm going to get off of here. And I will talk to you guys later. I'm going to eat dinner. Oh, today is day number two for the meatloaf. Oh, I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying it. And like I, I don't know if I told you. I know I mentioned it in the last video. I don't know if I mentioned it in this one. I put that pepper blend in the cabbage. Oh, and I did try out the, the uh, parsnip. Did not like it. It, it. it tasted like a carrot on steroids. So I'm going to be feeding that to, to, to the squirrel, okay? Ugh. Okay, so I did not like the parsnip. And as you all know, I don't like carrots. That's why I don't grow them. So I don't know what made me think I was going to grow a parsnip and like a parsnip. But it's always good to try things. Sometimes you think you might not like something and you love it. So there you go. 
So I'm glad I at least had a chance to try it. It only cost me a dollar to be able to try it and not like it. So I don't feel like anything was wasted with the parsnip, especially my growing time and space. Okay, so, but, oh yeah, I put that uh, sweet pepper and, and some red pepper in that cabbage. And boy, when I say it took it to the next level from here on in, I will be adding that, that pepper powder to the cabbage. It really, it was really, really delicious. So I look forward to uh, eating some more of that in the next five minutes here. So I'm going to get off so I can start smacking. And I will talk to you guys later. And may God bless you all. Bye-bye.